well. And uh, he's a, a founder of Kids vs. Global Warming. He's been responsible for suing the US government on behalf of his generation for wrecking the climate, and has been building a global movement of young people to deal with climate change. And he's going to tell us a bit about that. Thanks, Alex. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, thank you for being here today. Your presence at this conference is testament to the fact that you are taking seriously your own responsibilities as leaders. Thank you, Malala, for your courage and your passion. Uh, your, your story and your, your vision is, is inspiring, I think, for all of us. And I, I want to thank Zinteo and all those who made this work to make this conference and this panel a reality. Uh, this, this really is the kind of intergenerational dialogue that we need uh, if we want to solve the great global issues that we're here to discuss. So, I just turned 20 years old and I've spent almost eight years now speaking out against climate change. Uh, my work began when I was 12, after I realized that my generation will be affected more than anyone else by global warming. And since then I've spoken at hundreds, probably thousands of events, met with countless scientists, executives and politicians, organized marches and become the lead plaintiff in this federal lawsuit against the US government for failing to protect our atmosphere. And over the past year or so I've begun to think deeply about what it actually, you know, how we actually got into the mess that we're in. And I began to look at human history and, and started identifying points in which everything shifted all of a sudden. Uh, but then the trail led back even further than that, back to before the emergence of the human species, back before even the beginning of life itself, back before the earth was born, back to the very beginning. And as I've studied this story, I've noticed a pattern. Every time there is a problem in the universe, it solves it by bringing about the emergence of a new way, the emergence of something new. And this emergence follows a distinct pattern. First, there was a series of disconnected parts in competition with one another for, for resources and space. And then there was a moment when some threshold was crossed, many times caused by some sort of climate change. And then these pieces came together in increasingly complex ways to bring about the emergence of something new. This was how the primordial fire of the early universe came together to form stars. This is how stars created all of the elements that turned into everything we see around us today. This is how life came about from disconnected chemicals. This was how bacteria became nucleated cells, which can be seen as giant bacterial cooperatives, uh, in which a diversity of different entities work up or work together to make up a larger entity. This was how animals emerged as enormous societies of cells, each with distinct but connected roles. And this was how the universe brought forth the human a being with an extraordinary capacity to manipulate the environment in order to solve complex problems. This pattern of emergence, I believe, is the most important lesson that nature can teach us. Because we're now facing a problem more serious and more complex than, I believe, any problem that's, that's been seen since the beginning of the, of the universe. Because basically due to our unexamined addiction to fossil fuels, We've caused the great cycles of the Earth to become out of balance. And we're already beginning to feel the consequences all over the world, from increasingly intense droughts to species extinction that's, that's, whose rates are faster than the extinction of the dinosaurs. We are feeling this, this problem in a really real way. And I believe that in order to solve the problem of climate change, we have to look at the whole system of, of causal relationships that bring it about. And in my investigation of these relationships, I've sort of realized that climate change is almost a symptom of a much deeper sickness in the human condition. 
For hundreds of generations, we've operated from a mindset of disconnection, in which we separate ourselves from all that is around us and make decisions on behalf of only our own short-term personal interests. This is seen at the individual level, but also at the levels of communities, institutions, and even the human race as a whole. We've built a system of human interaction which operates as though it's entirely separate from the systems of biological and physical interaction which encompass us and surround us. We've cut ourselves off from the deep wisdom of the natural world and convinced ourselves that nature is inanimate, deterministic, and exists only for the benefit of the human race. Because of this way of thinking, we feel justified in harnessing and manipulating every aspect of the natural world, all in the name of progress, growth, and short-term personal gain. It is as though we've forgotten that we are just as much a part of nature as the birds and the trees and the rocks and the stars. This disconnection from nature and this disconnection from each other is what I see as, as the, the ultimate source of many of the world's greatest problems. But it need not be disheartening. For if we look to the patterns of nature, disconnection is only the precursor to the emergence of a new way. And this is the place, this is the phase that our people are at right now. I believe we are in the beginning stages of a transformation which will utterly redefine everything that we hold true about how the world operates. It is a transformation that runs deeper than the laws that we pass or the energy sources that we use, but is rather a fundamental shift in what it means to be human. It is a widening of scope, so that we look at things not just as they are, but, but uh, instead of all the complex modes of relationship that everything holds with, with every other thing. And above all, it is the shift. It's a shift in the way that we relate ourselves with all that is other. The time has now come to let go of the deep separation which has defined us for thousands of years and which lies within all of us to begin to operate with a mindset of inherent connection with all things, be they people or animals or trees or stars or the great earth herself. We must remember that everything is alive in its own unique way, and everything has a role to play in the natural order of things, including us. We are not isolated individuals operating among other disconnected individuals, but rather are part of an interconnected web of mutual cooperation that includes everything and has existed since the beginning of time. This transformation is already unfolding and it will continue whether we want it to or not. It's as though a great fire has been sparked and it is spreading throughout the entire world, breaking down the old ways and allowing new life to spring forth. The thing is, each of us has the choice about whether or not to allow this fire of transformation to flow through us as well. <clears throat> if we do, then we and our institutions will become born again into a new way of being human and doing business. And our people will be allowed to flourish for many generations to come. But if we resist this fire of transformation, then the systems we represent will be left behind in the coming times, torn apart from the inside out, and we will be left with nothing. I know that sounds dramatic, but it truly is the choice that we face. Suffering or transformation. Death or life. So this is my challenge to you all. For the sake of your own legacies, and the well-being of all who will inherit everything that you've gained. <coughs> Act not on behalf of your own personal interests, your own personal wealth, your own personal power, but instead on behalf of the greater community that you are a part of. Connect with those who will be affected by your decisions. Bring youth into your board meetings as representatives of future generations. Begin to restructure your businesses so that people and the planet are just as important as profits, power, and growth. I believe this can happen. And you as leaders hold an immense amount of power. And with that power comes a great deal of responsibility to serve your people, 
to care for this great planet which sustains us and gives us life, and to ensure the lasting well-being of every generation to come. This is your role as leaders. And speaking now as a representative of those unborn generations, I implore you, every time you make a decision, consider how it will impact them. The generation of your children, of your grandchildren, of, of their grandchildren, of every generation to come. This is the task that I give to you on their behalf. And now I only ask that we can work together to figure this out, to bring our world into a way of being in which we are connected once again. Let's make it happen. Thank you.